Neophyte bite. <laughs> <laughs> So the idea behind this neophyte bite is to address a question that I've gotten a number of times in comments section on previous episodes. It appears that the series of videos I did on lofting has proven very useful to a lot of viewers, but there are admittedly gaps in my presentation. One of the topics I failed to discuss is the existence and function of the so-called diagonals. So as you'll see, there's nothing particularly special about the diagonal lines. But in this episode, I'll get a chance to sort of lay out my conceptualization of how the lines work together and how boat plans are determined based on those lines. So buckle up, we're going back into lofting where things get a little bit more technical, but I'm hopefully going to make this a little bit more palatable to most of you. So let's talk about the diagonals. Okay, so what's the deal with the diagonals? So let's do a quick recap of what I've already discussed regarding the lines drawing. If any of this information is new to you, then I definitely urge you to go back and look at some previous episodes, namely episode two, episode four, and five and six. So to recap, the lines drawing is presenting the three-dimensional shape of the boat in various perspectives. In each of the perspectives, you've got one set of lines that are curved, while the other two lines form a grid work that those curved lines are plotted against. So for instance, in the body plan view, the station lines are curved, while the water lines and buttock lines form the horizontal and vertical grid lines respectively. You'll notice that the diagonal lines are conspicuously absent. So why aren't they there, and what is ultimately the function of the diagonals? Why are they included in the table of offsets? Why are they included, generally, in the lines drawing? So to get a handle on the diagonals, let's look first at what I've already gone over in previous episodes. First, let's look at the water lines in the body plan view. In this view, the water lines are horizontal grid lines. You see them here in blue. As we saw in episode four, the horizontal grid lines here can be thought of as horizontal cross sections of the hull. And when we look at those cross sections from either the top or the bottom of the boat, they produce the curved water lines we see in the half breadth view. Now let's look back at the body plan view at the vertical grid lines that you see here in red. The cross sections produced by these vertical grid lines generate the buttock lines that we see in the profile view. So yet again, straight lines in the body plan view produce curved lines in the profile view. So what about the diagonals? If we now turn back to the body plan view, we can see that the diagonals are actually grid lines that are oblique to both the water lines and the station lines. So in other words, they are grid lines that are at an angle. So just as with the horizontal grid lines and the vertical grid lines in the body plan view, these diagonal lines are actually producing cross sections of the hull. The main difference being that these cross sections, instead of being taken horizontally or vertically are now taken at an angle. Now, just like with the horizontal and vertical grid lines, these diagonal grid lines produce curved lines in another view. So let's look at them one at a time. We'll start with the topmost diagonal line. Here you can see it's been isolated. You have to imagine now that we are taking a sliver of the hull along this line from the very front of the boat all the way back. This diagonal sliver will produce a curved line when we look at it from, say, the half breadth view. There's nothing particularly remarkable about this line. It's just another curved line, like a buttock line or a water line. So now let's look at the second diagonal line. 
Here again, we have a diagonal cross section of the hull. If we look at this cross section in the half breadth view, we get another curved line. We can repeat this process all over again for the final diagonal line. We take a cross section and that produces a curved line. Taken all together, the diagonals as seen from the half breadth view really look like water lines. Okay, so now that we have a handle on what the diagonals actually are, let's talk about how one would go about lofting the diagonals. Now the boat plans provide two pieces of the puzzle. First, you're given in the table of offsets coordinates or offsets for the diagonals where they will intersect each given station line. Then, at least generally, you are shown how the diagonal grid lines should look as seen in the body plan view. So in order to use the diagonal offsets, you'll first have to draw in the diagonal grid lines. It makes sense to do this while you are plotting all the other grid lines and laying out the grid work for your lofting. With the diagonal grid lines drawn in, you can then proceed to use the diagonal offsets as given in the table of offsets to help you draw in and fare in the station line curves in the body plan view. The following animation will show you how this works. So real quick, let me explain how the offsets for the diagonals work. In the table of offsets, you're given a selection of coordinates for the diagonals. And the big difference for the diagonals is that these offsets or coordinates are measured along the diagonal as opposed to along a horizontal or a vertical line. So to use the diagonal offsets, you'll have to first draw in all the diagonal grid lines and then measure along each of the lines for each given offset. So for instance, here we're looking at station four the offset is 2 foot 5 inches and 2 eighths of an inch. So now we're going to measure off of the center line along the diagonal out 2 foot 5 inches and 2 eighths of an inch. And this point should represent a point on station 4. This process is carried out for all of the station lines as well as for the stem and the transom. So at this point, you might be tempted to just run with whatever station line curves you've generated by plotting the waterline offsets, the buttock line offsets, and the diagonal offsets. But just as you did with the waterline and buttock lines, you have to bounce between different views and make sure that everything is consistent. So we need to do this with the diagonals as well. Now, it's a general maxim of boat design that any cross-section of the hull will generate a fair curve in a particular perspective. This is true for the water lines, this is true for the buttock lines, and this is also true for the diagonals. So we need to draw out the curved diagonal lines that would be generated by taking those angled cross-sections. So what perspective are we going to draw these diagonal lines in? Well, generally it's done in the half breadth perspective. The only catch is that in the table of offsets, we have not been given any half breadths for the diagonals. So we're gonna have to figure those out for ourselves. So using the tick stick technique that I've shown you in a previous episode, you're simply gonna pick up the half breadths from the body plan view and transfer them to the half breadth view. In other words, you'll pick up the horizontal distance from the center line out to where the diagonal intersects a given station line. You'll then transfer that distance to the half breadth view. You will repeat this process for each given station line as well as the stem and transom. This will give you a set of points that you can then fare in with a batten. The line that you produce by faring in all these points is a projection of the diagonal cross section as viewed from either above or below the boat. So why even bother lofting the diagonals? What's the purpose? What do they tell you? Well, first, it's worth saying that you don't always have to plot the diagonals. 
In fact, while I used all the diagonal offsets to draw in my station line curves, I didn't go to the trouble of actually lofting out the diagonal lines. This is because the hull for the Newfoundland trap skiff is not particularly tricky, and so I really didn't need to work with those diagonals to help me refine my station line curves. But if the hull you're working on has a lot of shape and contour and curvature, then those diagonals are essential. So what do the diagonals tell you that the buttock lines and the water lines don't? Well, first, they just give you more information. The more information you have about the hull, the more accurate your lofting and therefore your build will be. Secondly, the diagonals sort of approximate plank lines. So if you get the diagonals fared in, then you're more likely to have an easier time when you're laying out your plank lines. But let's just focus on the fact that we're being given more data about the hull. More data is good. However, a boat designer doesn't want to give you too much data. If they gave you a million offsets, that would be practically impossible to utilize. So the goal with a table of offsets is to give you just the right amount of information so that you can generate the complex curves of the hull. Not too much and not too little. So the following animation will probably help you understand this a little bit better. So stepping away from wooden boats and boat lofting in particular, I'm going to use this curvy line as a stand-in for, say, a station line. So to start, we'll plot just the waterline offsets and see what kind of shape we would get if we only use this information. So each blue dot represents a different waterline offset. Once all of these points are plotted, we'll connect them together with a fair line. This you would typically do using a batten. So from a purely mathematical standpoint, the blue curve that I've drawn here is the fairest curve that incorporates all these waterline offsets. However, it's plain to see that the blue curve here is a bad approximation of the curvy line that we're trying to actually generate so we need more points. Let's now add in some buttock line offsets. So just as before with the water lines, you can see the buttock grid lines drawn in here, and then a series of red points that represent offsets. With those buttock line offsets plotted, let's now connect the blue dots and the red dots together with a fair curve. So notice now that with the addition of these buttock line offsets, the red curve that we've drawn in here is a much better approximation of the curvy line that we're trying to arrive at. Nevertheless, there's still some discrepancy between this red line and the original black line that we're trying to arrive at. So once again, we need more offsets. While the red line is better than the blue line, it's still not the best that we could hope for. So the options are that we could add more buttock line and water line offsets, but at the expense of providing too much data. Instead, another option is that we could use diagonals. In this way, we might be able to provide less data, but with equal or greater accuracy in our approximation. So let's check it out. So just as before, we'll add in now diagonal grid lines and plot our diagonal offsets. With all the offsets plotted, we now connect all of the provided points with one fair curve. And so you can see that the green curve finally is a very good approximation of the black curve that is our target. However, there's still some discrepancy. So this is the purview of lofting corrections. The discrepancy you see here between the green line and the black line in this toy model shows you why just simply plotting the offsets and connecting them with a the fair curve does not guarantee you that you will generate the desired shapes. Okay, so that's it for this neophyte bite on what are the diagonals.
I truly hope you enjoyed it and that it'll prove useful to you in your future boat building endeavors. So if you dig the vid, then please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and if you feel so compelled, think of maybe becoming a patron on my Patreon. So with that said, I want to give a quick shout out to some of my newest patrons. Mucho thanks to Leo, Gary Mulholland, Gordon Linskett, and Charles Newman. So thanks and stay tuned for the next episode. Bye. Oh.